Hey, Kyle is wonderful here again with something a little bit different this time. It will not be a review of a wrestling show. Instead, we will review the backstage segments that happened after the July 3rd New Japan Road Show. And the reason I wanted to do this is these are some pretty important stuff that was said. Uh, all the translations are up online. The reason I, I'm, I'm probably not going to do this every single time because you can just go find for free on NJPW World all these uh, translated with the subtitles uh, promos yourself. So every single time there's an event, maybe 12 hours or, or 20 hours, somewhere around there, you'll get the all the transcripts up for free. You can go on njpwworld.com, and you don't even have to be signed up to watch them. So anyway, I wanted to get into this because a lot of things were said. These are some of the first comments since the Forbidden Door pay-per-view cross-promoted between AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling. And also... We've got last uh, July 3rd was the big return of not only Kenta from his injury for five months, but uh, after three years of being gone, Kushida returned last night. So we had a lot of talk. Kushida explained everything basically that happened in WWE and NXT. That was really important to hear. So let's just get right into it again. I'm not going to probably do this every single time, but um I thought there were some great things here, and I did put out a review of the entire show, so go catch check that out. That was the last video I posted on this channel. So if you're looking for the review for the July 3rd show, that one's already up, but these are some really important backstage comments that I want to get into. So let's just get into it. They they start, they start go in chronological order. So if you remember, the first match of, of July 3rd was a mystery opponent where one of the... Um, I think it was Nakashima got injured, one of the young lions. So there was a mystery opponent. It turned out to be Tiger Mask. So remember, after the mask, Tiger Mask got on the microphone, and we didn't quite know what he said, but we did see that he was holding up his newly won AJ, AJPW Junior Heavyweight title. So that's all Japan's junior world title. And so we didn't know what he said, so now we know. He said, Thanks, thank you, everyone. Today I was given the moniker of X, which is what they put like as for the unknown name. Uh, so he's like, I was given the monitor, moniker of X, but I took this world junior title in AJPW, and now I'm back in NJPW. On the 14th, I'll make my first defense right here in Kurokin. I'll win that match and then move on to another defense in Osaka. Don't underestimate me. I'll return with this title. And then backstage, Tiger Mask talks a little bit more, and he says, I hope me being X wasn't a letdown to anyone. It was a bit embarrassing for me, but I did get to show off my new title. This is the first time a New Japan pro wrestler ha ever wore this belt in a New Japan ring. And when I was younger, I would have brushed that off, uh, brushed off that accomplishment. But at this stage, I'm more, I'm thinking more carefully about my defenses. If I win my next defense, I'll only have four days until the next one. It'll be tough, but that's the life of a champion. I won't back down. And then the interviewer asked him, uh, since both of those defenses aren't part of New Japan, uh, will he be having a defense in New Japan? And Tiger Mask says, well, you bet I want that, but G1 is next. And to be honest, I'm not very familiar with the younger AJPW guys or how experienced they are. I'd like to see what Oiwa or Fujita could do against their guys. That way I could see if any of their wrestlers strike my fancy. But actually, those AJPW guys are pretty big. Soto is heavier than I am. And... There's a lot I don't know about how things work there. But as champion, I'm determined to beat whoever I face. This title has a lot of history. I'm sure they're tickled to see me with it, kind of saying sarcastically that a New Japan guy is holding an AJPW belt. And then he says, well, they ought to do something about it. So really good promo here from Tiger Mask, the veteran. Um, I'm excited. Maybe I'll check out some of those shows where he has a defense because I'm ex uh, definitely intrigued in that storyline. So then Oiwa comes in and he's upset about losing. He says he watched Forbidden Door. I also watched Tiger Mask win the AJPW junior title. It's clear that I'm not good enough. Damn it. And he walks off. Um, Makabe up next and he's talking about Oiwa saying the first mistake you made was picking a fight with us. What do you think you'd accomplish in that ring today? That's all I need to say. But he came at us. He has guts. And then Hanma says, Oiwa, you are indeed strong, but there's no way I'm losing to you. You might have a few steps on me, but that does. But not all that makes a pro wrestler. Don't ask, underestimate my experience and my career. Also, Tiger Mask is looking lively as hell. 
He's all Japan junior champion. Kojima's Noah's GHC heavyweight champion. That fires me up. The veterans are making waves while I'm spinning my wheels. Or like while I'm over here spinning my wheels. But I can step up too. Usually I'm a G1 C block mainstay. But this time C and D blocks are a real thing. So I guess I'll have to move on to E block by myself. And he walks off. Interesting stuff there by Hanma. Kind of kind of getting under his skin that some of these older guys are winning titles. And Hanma couldn't even get past Clark Connors in the uh, semifinals for the All-American qualifier. Anyway, after match two last night where Suzuki Gun won the six-man tag, we've got Master Wado coming in. Uh, he says, the New Japan Road, it's all about walking the path of NJPW. I'll begin to forge my own path. I may have lost the junior tag titles, but it won't let, I won't let that slow me down. From this day forever and forever, from here on, I'll keep moving forward. Then I'll become a master. So we've got a guy who's clearly saying he's not a master, but his name is Master. All right. And then Tenzan says, today was the first of three in Korokin. I hope Fujita goes after Suzuki Goon just like he did today. I want him to tear them. I wanted, I wanted him to tear into them today. I had his back, but we fell in the end. He fell in the end, he said, not we. Uh, but I think he left an impression. I'm hoping for greater strides from here, so I'll do my best in these next two days. In a couple days, I'll team with X. Who could that be? But whoever it is, we'll give it our all. Uh, but now listen to Fujita. Fujita falls to a knee and yells, Suzuki, I'll, I'll pay you back for this one-on-one -on -one tomorrow. I'll crush you, you bastard. So good fiery promo from Vegeta. Um, what Tenzan is talking about with the X, uh, I'm pretty sure all the X's are filled by Tiger Mask. That that was the uh, injury spot from Nakashima. So it, uh, <laughs> apparently I know more than Tenzan. Um, Desperado now in, he was in that same match where Suzuki Goon won. And this is some, some major news coming out of this promo. So, so this is definitely when I decided, oh, I want to do a, uh, a review of these promos. So El Desperado says, I just did a short stint in AEW. I didn't know when I'd ever come back here. I don't want to go to America ever again. I don't want to. However, you see, first Jericho called us saying he was shorthanded. So Suzuki Goon teamed up with Jericho Appreciation Society. Me and Lance had their backs. All that. And I was in the ring for two minutes, but I'd do it again. Then we were on the Forbidden Door pre-show. We faced Swerve, Swerve and Keith Lee. They were an awesome team. I loved facing them. Yeah, I lost. So I shouldn't be satisfied, but it was a worthy fight, and that's what I want. But there's another, more worthy opponent. Since when or since then, I've had the wild thing song stuck in my head. Moxley. He's enticing. He's made his mark on NJPW and AEW rings. He bleeds. He makes his opponent bleed. Boy, that looks like a lot of fun. I want a piece. I'm not sure when. I'm not sure where. I'll go anywhere if you're game. I don't really want to fly anymore, but if you call me out, I'll come. I want to have some fun, too. I await your reply. So we've got a challenge thrown out to John Moxley, the interim AEW world champion from El Desperado. And Del El Desperado won't have much to do with G1 coming up this month. So I could see maybe um, El Desperado versus John Moxley for the interim AEW title. I wouldn't have not have guessed that a month ago, but I think that could be a thing we see in the next month on AEW television. Like I said, I don't know exactly what they have planned for the junior heavyweights and some of the preliminary matches during G1, but I think they can afford to at least send um, two or three maybe even four people from New Japan over to AEW television if AEW wants them. So this is where I was like, oh, I was really taking note of some of the things they were saying here because, remember, this is the first time a lot of these guys have talked since the AEW Forbidden Door pay-per-view. And, and that was really cool. So after that, now we've got Hanari and uh, – and, uh, Oh, no, no, not Hernari, but this is right after Hernari and the Great Okan beat the LIJs to junior heavyweights. So Hiromu's the first to talk, and he says, that was interesting. Upsetting that we lost, but still interesting. I like facing challenges like Okan, and if there's someone like Okan in the junior division, that could light a spark. But he's a rare breed. Guys like him don't come around very often. I saw something on Twitter that was that the minimum height requirement to enter the dojo is now 170 centimeters, which is like five foot, five and a half. 
And he's Hiroma continues, what does that mean? It used to be 180 centimeters, which is like five foot nine inches. Why was it lowered by 10 centimeters, which is like three and a half uh, inches? Sorry, sorry. We don't know the metric system in America. I had to look all this up myself and convert it. Anyway, what does New Japan want? Hiromu continues. Juniors or small heavyweights? Remember when I proposed that we have a tryout for, for juniors? I don't get it. Why don't you let me announce a junior tryout from the ring? Or do you just want heavyweights? Go talk to Okan about that. Let's talk about this tryout again. And he walks off. So interesting stuff there from Hiromu getting a little upset that the junior division isn't being taken serious and stuff. Hanare is now in and says, did y'all just see that? Bushi was sleeping and then he motions like, oh, sleeping. Sleeping like an idiot. Sleeping like all those fans and sleeping on me. As soon as this G1 was announced, six years of effing fire in my heart. I haven't lost a damn match since then. I've knocked out just about everyone in the ring with me. Just like I'm going to do to Tanahashi, Kenta, Goto, Zack, Evil. And then he pauses. Who's the last guy? I don't even know. And hilariously, the last guy is Naito. And while all this is happening, Naito's music is blaring in the background. So hilariously, the person he forgot about is the music blaring in the background. Um, anyway, Hinari continues. But what do I know? Did I just... or? Uh, but what I do know is that I just packed on 10 kilograms. Again, I had to convert it. It's 22 pounds. But he said, I packed on 10 kilograms of pure muscle. I'm the biggest guy in the C block. Time to unleash the ultimate weapon, which is the name of his um, full Nelson finisher that he's been putting everyone out with. He also has recently got uh, Jesse Vargas, former boxer, to help as a striking coach. And I think if if they had given Hanari an easier block, I think he could have won it and surprised a lot of people. But I still think Hanari is going to surprise a lot of people. He's got some tough, tough people in this group. Uh, Tanahashi, Kenta, Goto, Zack Sabre Jr., Evil, and, and Naito. So like I said, I don't think he's going to win. But I predict that he will spring probably three upsets. Uh, that we that are pretty big deals. So this the push of Hanari starts here. I mean, it's kind of already started, but it's going to be solidified in this G1. And I'm looking forward to it. He's been um, looking like a badass for sure. Great Okan now in, and he brings a chair. So it looks like he's going to talk for a while, and he does. He's holding on to the United Empire flag and laughing. Then Great Okan says, no matter how much NJPW loathes us, they have no choice but to rely on us. You get it now, don't you? We were supposed to be dining with beautiful ladies at a world-class restaurant. I wish I could show you how they begged for us. They stormed the gates, and they were waiting at the palace doors for our return. All good fun. And then he goes, hey, AEW, FTR, RP, or, uh, Rapungi Vice, cowards, scoundrels, shame on you all. What did we do to deserve a three-way? Did you make that up as you went? And side note, yes, yes, they did. It was originally supposed to be something like maybe Young Bucks versus um, United Empire, but everything was getting changed last second. So literally, it was making up as they went. So anyway, um, Great Ocon continues. Uh, backstabbers, cowards, for shame, disembowelment awaits you. And it's clear that FTR and, Arp and Rapungi Vice were in on it, conspiring against us. Cash and Rocky with a tandem pile driver. What the hell was that? They clearly conspired, and now they stole, and that's how they stole our belts. Dax was just taking a rest. You think you can hold the belts because of that? Mother effer, AEW, F U F T R, son of a B, Rapungi Vice. Well, we'll have to take care of that after G1. Until then, care for those belts as if they were your own children. It's a good promo here from Okan. Great stuff and basically setting up uh, more. Well, that's the one thing we knew is that FTR was going to probably come to Japan at some point. Um, looks like it'll be after G1. Nobody thought it would be during G1 since both Cobb and Great O'Connor in the G1. So now um, after the next match, right after Clark Connors, the DKC, and Yuji Nagata lost to the three LIJ heavyweights, um, Connors and DKC come in. They're both hurting and short of breath. Connors tells the DKC the welcome to, welcome to Japan. And then Connors waits for DKC to say something, but DKC is really short of breath. But Connors tells him, please say something. And Connors doesn't really look that out of breath. He's used to this style now. 
Uh, the DKC stupidly does not take his mouth guard off. So even though he's speaking English, I almost needed English captions because uh, he's talking like this because he's got a mouth guard in. Like, what? <laughs> take your mouth guard out, bro. I hate that. Anyway, um, the DKC says, I want to learn to fight harder, and I will learn that in Japan. I will follow these two, and the camera pans out to show Yuji Nagata's there with them. Uh, the DKC bows to both men. Nagata says, good fire, and you too, Connors. If you remember, the announcers were going crazy for the DKC with all his hi and his DKC fire. <laughs> it was really funny. Um, Connors then makes a motion for uh, Nagata to talk, and, and they walk off him and the DKC. Yuji Nagata then says, back to my home, NJPW, the, for the first time in three months. It's my 30th year, and I'm journeying to all parts of the world, but this is my home. Three months can fly by quickly. Suddenly, I'm feeling nostalgic. But if I leave, I shouldn't come back empty-handed. I have to return with something big. On September 17th, I'll celebrate 30 years on the NJPW mat. I'll do something big that involves the entire Japanese pro wrestling world. And then Nagata goes to leaves, but the, the press ask him. Uh, they say, the DKC is a pretty unique wrestler. What's your impression of him? So Nagata says, the DKC loved karate, loves karate, learned it on his own, and he's incorporated it into his game. Even though he's smaller and has been banged up, he's somehow made it to this ring. He's clawing for results along with Clark. That's This is the result of that. Just like he has his goal, I've got my own out there so I can relate to their spirits, to their own spirits. So good promo here, putting over the young guys. Um, I'm excited for more DKC and like everybody, the announcers laughing along with them. Um, Shingo's now in and he says that he's safe and sound back in Japan. The AEW trip was a nice bit of stimulation. I went as the lone LIJ representative. I did win the match, but the legend Sting stole it. That gets me hot. I've got a new goal. When I'm in the States, I want some AEW main events and title matches. But now I'm working towards G1, towards results. And that Clark Connors is something. After G1, we can have some fun. So setting up looks like we're going to get a nice Shingo versus Clark Connors match, maybe for the KOPW trophy, if Shingo still has it at that point. And it also looks like Shingo wants a piece of Sting, maybe Darby Allen. So uh, he also wants main events and title matches in AEW. So all that sounds good to me. Every single thing he said sounds good to me. Naito now in, he says, it's been 12 days since I've been in the ring. Others went to America, but I wasn't invited. I'm just not that important of a New Japan representative. But this unimportant person is, is about to win G1 during its 50th year anniversary. And that ought to make me worth something. And that's why I need the win G1, Cabron. Now, after the fifth match from July 3rd, where uh, House of Torture beat Chaos, Toriyano just quickly walks by the camera and says, I hate that cage, and walks right off. Uh, Yujiro now in. He's the one that got the um, decisive, I think it was a pinfall. And Yuji now, Yujiro says, the six-man tag title match in two days will go down just like today. And it'll be the same story in G1. Right, Yoshihashi? So now Evil in with Dick Togo. Evil says, Goto, did you understand me? When I beat you in the title match, when I beat you in the title match, hand over the G1 points too. You're going to lose. So lose gracefully. Don't forget it. And then Dick Togo says, Yano, you're already shaking in your boots. Back to the pig pen where you belong. Enjoy your slop. Um, as, as far as a Dick Togo versus Toru Yano match, I'm kind of intrigued about how they are going to do this dog cage match. So the first person to put them in a dog cage wins, basically. Uh, now after the semi-main uh, event where Chaos beat Suzuki Goon in a two versus two tag, Tai Chi says... Uh, if you aren't interested, then don't come around. I've got nothing to say today. And then he says a bunch of things anyway. Um, <laughs> my first test will be Ishii. Fine. Don't you have a in knee injury? I thought you were sidelined. Why, do why don't you take a longer break? You pester me. Just take a rest and stay out of my way. I'm motivated to win so I can increase my YouTube subs and like counts. So we're finding out uh, Tai Chi's motivation here for G1 is to get his YouTube channel up. While you're at it, show, hit me that subscribe and the like. 
I have the same motivation. Anyway, Okada walks in with a pep in his step. He's all kind of happy and stuff. And he says, these three shows in Kurokin feel like the start of G1. I have a feeling a lot of guys are studying me, trying to figure out how to beat me. They can study me as much as they want, but I'll always have something new. So short and sweet, but good from Okada there. Ishii now in and he says, first off, uh, first off that show with AEW, I'm truly sorry I missed it. I'm ashamed of myself for doing so. And you, you're tick- you're ticking me off. All talk as always. You've talked a big game to get here. Always the same. You can't go on like this. You have to make the most of this. I'll at least let you live. Watch how I make the best of a situation. So I'm pretty sure he was talking to uh, Tai Chi, who is his opponent. I think his first opponent in G1 on the second night of G1. So setting up that one. And now we're in the ring after the main event where Kushida, Alex Zane, and Tanahashi defeated Kenta, Taiji Ishimori, and Gato. So in the ring, remember, um, everybody always talks at the end of a main event, even if they're a heel. But this was a big deal. Kushida, after, in his first match in the NJPW after one, uh, three years, so Kushida gets on the mic and he says, I'm so happy to be wrestling in NJPW ring. Three years ago, I left here and went to WWE. I left with a dream and maybe, unfortunately, I have dreams left unfulfilled. Now I have another chance to make dreams come true. For that, I'm grateful. Alex Zane, for us to wrestle together in this situation and for it to all come full circle, it's almost poetic. Thank you. And if you didn't know, Alex Zane, uh, Alex Zane was in NXT in WWE with Kushida and Alex Zane under the name of Ari Sterling. Uh, his final match in NXT was against Tanahashi. Now, I mean, against Kushida. Now Kushida's first match back in NJPW has Alex Zane on his team. So that's very poetic uh, and stuff. Not to mention the whole Kenta thing being uh, basically the first NJPW guy to go to NXT also being in this match. Um, so yeah, he says, Alex Zane, for us to wrestle in this situation and for it to all full, come full circle, it's almost poetic. Thank you. And Tanahashi, I know it's tough around here. I know people will be talking. You brought me in from Smash, and then I left, but now I'm back. I'm sorry for the trouble I caused. Let's move on together. Then Kushida bows to Tanahashi. Tana shakes his hand, and they hug it out. And then Zane says, thanks for the meal. That's kind of his gimmick. It's uh, like saying it, it's a certain thanks for the meal is the translation. But it's kind of like this thing where um, it's just a word you say, like to show thanks, not only for like who cooked it, but who harvest um, harvested the vegetables or um, even like maybe the animals for sacrificing themselves for so, stuff like that. But um, Zane says it and everybody laughs. So now we go to the back. While they were out in the ring talking, Kenta says, what the hell was that out there? It's been a while. Have you gotten taller? And then the camera shakes. No. Kenta says, of course he didn't. I talk to you as much as I do some relatives. Why is today all about Kushida? It's my comeback too, you know. And the camera shakes, yes. And I think he said when I talk to you, he meant the cameraman or whatever. Not Kushida. Anyway, Kenta continues and says, you do know, I think they all knew. What the hell? Let's sit. He really loves to talk. Who? Kushi, of course. Kushi sounds like that string rubber ball you tossed around in your in your dorm room. What kind of name is Kushi? Give me a break. And how about that foreigner? Isn't he too old to pull off saying Think, thanks for the meals? Back in WWE, I kept saying respect me. And that never caught on. And here, Japanese people are too kind. Big applauses for thanks for my meal. What the hell? You know, this is my comeback too, but they don't. It's been a while, but what I really wanted to say was, where did my stick go? And he walks off. Great promo there. Um, What he was talking about is totally true. Like, uh, Kenta had this great, like, Of course, I'm biased because I like Japanese wrestling and I like professional wrestling. But people that are fans of NXT and WWE aren't necessarily fans of pro wrestling. They're fans of sports entertainment. So here's Kenta saying, like, respect me. And nobody buys it. Nobody takes it as a good tagline. But over here in Japan, you can just have this foreigner say, 
thanks for my meal and the crowd goes crazy so i really like that he brought that up taiji ishimori in now and he says he's the next challenger wait on hold a minute hold on a minute kushida i hear you moving to la if that's the case then why not stay there and help build up strong before coming here or did you think that it would be easier to come straight here and try to replace me am i that underrated but i haven't agreed to the challenge yet we still have two more days right at any rate i'll keep evaluating kushida who's not a challenger yet so tanahashi in the back says uh kushida welcome back and to kenta the guy i wrestled fought over for the u.s title with for now at least welcome back and to me for returning from AEW, welcome back that was funny i've got high hopes for what kushida does in njpw from now on alex zane says finally i get a little bit of revenge on bullet club it may have been kushida's pinfall but when one dines we all dine thanks for the meal and bullet club bring my socks next time or i'll eat you alive Let's eat, he says at the end. So Kushida now comes in super winded. He hasn't had any long matches in WWE for years. This one only went about 13 minutes, which is definitely short for a New Japan main event. But that's exactly why. Not only Kushida returning, but Kenta returning. Kushida is so out of breath here, but this is one of the most important promos I've heard in a long time. Uh, this is great. So Kushida comes and he asks if, he, if they mind if he sits. So then he sits on the floor and he's like, it's been three years since I've done this. And today, uh, I'm sounding like Hanma. Can you hear me all right? I'm sorry. It's because he's like so out of breath. And I like the uh, ragged Hanma catching strays <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> um, I, th so Kushida continues. I think it'll be disrespectful to NJPW and WWE if I keep bringing them up. So this will be the last time I talk about that American promotion. But allow me this one last time. This is for all the fans. Even if I can't reach them all, please humor me. In April, I left WWE. The turnover is fast there, and I was left without a spot. Joining WWE was a dream of mine, one that I fulfilled, but we weren't able to make it to the main roster. We were no longer needed. I had a dream of facing Daniel Bryan and Kyle O'Reilly at WrestleMania. Those were my dreams, but unfortunately, a huge wall was in my way. I was able to knock on the door, but I couldn't enter. Even so, the NXT group was amazing. I worked hard those three years, and I have no regrets. I know some people will think that I've returned having not fulfilled my dreams. They're not entirely wrong. I can't blame them for thinking that way, but I'm only feeling half satisfied. As a wrestler, it's not just about what we do in the ring. It's about spreading your philosophy, your message to the world. Three years ago, Tanahashi sent me off. Facing him was a dream I had for a long time. Because of that, I've decided to return to New Japan Pro Wrestling. I know Desperado's going to mock me for not getting to the point. <laughs> Desperado catches the strays now. I can tell you to believe in me, and some never will, no matter how much I ask. So I won't ask them. I'll show them. Three years have passed. Some things have changed. Some things have not. Taiji Ishimori is a strong champion. In NXT, I fought a lot of guys in different weight classes in terms of career and attitude. Ishimori is the best opponent for me to overcome right now. Thank you for your support. So, wow. Uh, that that ends all of the um, backstage segments, comments. And, wow, I, very, very, very honest um, stuff here from Kushida. It's not like he didn't me being a huge NXT fan as well as a new Japan fan. He didn't tell me anything I didn't already know, but for him to just come out and say it here. And he really hopes that this gets back to the fans. Another reason I wanted to do this video today is uh pretty huge. Like, so if you're not, uh, if you're just a new Japan fan or an AEW fan and you don't, and you don't follow WWE whatsoever, uh, when, when they brought Kushida into NXT, it was like triple H and William Regal running NXT kind of separately away from Vince McMahon's, uh evil um thumb where he has to get his thumbprints on everything vince mcmahon kind of just let them do whatever they wanted in nxt so triple h and william regal and a couple other guys were building up an actual professional wrestling company as opposed to sports entertainment 
And it was going all right until AEW was formed. Now, I'm not going to hate on AEW for killing off the black and gold. The black and gold was always going to get killed. NXT was always going to die because eventually Vince McMahon was going to put his fingerprints on it. We knew that it was going to the day would come. So the fact that AEW was born is a good thing. The The spirit of black and gold NXT lives in AEW, especially now that they've got William Regal and some of the guys that were on NXT. But anyway, all of this came to an end. AEW started to become competition. They wanted to put NXT on TV instead of the WWE Network, give them two hours instead of one hour, which takes away like that in, almost instantly made NXT sports entertainment instead of pro wrestling right there. So there's the first crack in the wall. Then AEW destroys NXT in, in ratings because <laughs> NXT at the end of the day is just the minor leagues where they get some people have to go to the main roster and stuff. So um, once NXT lost the uh, ratings battle to AEW, Vince McMahon then had to put his grimy hands all over NXT. Triple H was taken out of power. William Regal was taken out of power. And they no longer had a need for anybody that was a professional wrestler. Who was stuck on the roster with still being a professional wrestler? Kushida. What was Kushida doing most of his NXT career? Being a cruiserweight in the cruiserweight division. He was even a one-time cruiserweight champion. Well, by this time, they eliminated and got rid of the cruiserweight division. So there isn't even a cruiserweight division anymore for Kushida. And like he was saying, he was knocking and knocking on that door to get to the main roster. But nope, they had no need for um, professional wrestlers anymore. They only want like big guys that are like, or women that are like six foot five and 300, 250 pounds, pure muscle and that they can mold into their own uh, to be a sports entertainer, not a, not a pro wrestler. So Kushida thankfully got out of there. It took him a while. He probably had to fulfill his contract when the contract ended. He de- definitely made the right decision not to resign. So um, right, like right when Kushida was leaving, he was getting destroyed by Von Wagner and Kushida was part of a, a tag team with Ikim and Jiro where they were just a comedy tag team that weren't even having any matches. They were like doing backstage segments. Um, so very thankful that Kushida got out of there. Great to hear him. And with his own words, tell us how it went here. No lies detected in anything Kushida said. And I'm really glad to have him back here. Sure. He could have went to AEW. Sure. He could have went to impact or he could have just stayed on strong for the entire time, but it is great to be here. And he did have a little bit of message for all the people. When Kushida made his return to the seemingly challenged Taiji Ishimori, the internet went crazy with people saying, Oh my God, Kushida has to be stuck in the junior heavyweight division again. Is he only going to be in the junior heavyweight division for his whole career? And I don't have the answer for that, but the very end of this, let's go back to what Kushida said. He said, some things have changed, some things have not. Taiji Ishimori is a strong champion in NXT. I fought a lot of guys of different weight classes. But in terms of career and attitude, Ishimori is the best opponent for me to overcome right now. So with that, like right now, and him saying that he's been fighting different people of weight classes, I think that's a little teaser that says maybe uh, Kushida will not be stuck in the junior division for his entire career. To me, I don't really care either way. It it would be nice for him to have more opponents, uh, fresher matchups in the heavyweight division. But I think like I think it should I think the junior heavyweight division should be treated just as um, well as the heavyweight division i wish they were like one in the same one a and one b i wish that the best of the super juniors tournament was on the exact same level as the g1 as far as it's the exact same thing it's just the junior heavyweights and and that's ultimately what we want we want the junior heavyweight division to be exactly as good as the heavyweight division and for them to be two separate things one has the bigger guys one has the smaller quicker guys and then we go from there. There's still chances with this, like the sixth man never open weight and the open weight title in general for people to have inter weight class matches. But um, I don't necessarily like that people go back and forth all willy nilly. Oh, all of a sudden we, we're going to have El Phantasmo join the G1 or without having to put on any weight or anything disconcernably bigger. The exact same weight that he was when he was in the best of the super juniors. 
and that kind of takes away from the sporting aspect that New Japan tries to always do. So I'm not really ragging on them too much. It's just kind of like, and I'm not ragging on the fans that thought that about Kushida. They just have Kushida's best interests and heart. And it seems like Kushida wanted to be a heavyweight. That's why they had that reaction. But it does make sense to maybe start Kushida back in the junior heavyweight division. Great when he starts out here, then you can move him up. Especially we have G1 coming. So um, it was too late for him to enter G1, apparently. I don't know why he's not. It would have been nice to have him in G1, but um, it's also nice to have him kind of pick up where he left off, and then you can go into the heavyweight division potentially, or just try and keep the uh, build up the junior heavyweight. Remember Hiromu's uh, interview earlier? Uh, he, it seems like Hiromu's really mad about the junior heavyweight uh, division right now, so he probably thinks the exact same way I do. So I'm going to get going. I will be back in a couple hours with the night seven of the new Japan road. That'll be the July 4th show. So I will be here with that review in a couple hours. So stick tuned for, stay tuned for that. But yeah, um, I just really wanted people to, to know about these backstage comments. There's so much going on with like AEW people calling out AEW and, and WWE and, and stuff like that. So really interesting, really great stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. You can catch all of these on every backstage comments comes out about 12 to 20 hours after each event. You can find them for free on njpwworld.com. No need to pay any money. You get those ones for free, the backstage comments. So I'll talk to you guys again in a few hours. Have a great night. Peace.